let's go now to Lilith, yeah, which uh, is an international, internationally celebrated artist. Uh, and she, you will see, is using art as a medium of social change in poor, poor communities. Please, Lili, we are very happy to have you here. practicing with no theory. So after listening to um, people's presentation with beautiful um, illustration, well-formulated, artic articulated theory, so I felt quite pressured. <laughs> and so, but after the very inspiring conversation and hearing people's uh, presentation, my hidden image uh, emerged. And so I have a very simple uh, theory um, about, uh, I think, about the trans uh, transdisciplinary art just formulated um, this morning. Uh, I think uh, I talked to, I think, Adrian or Peter, and uh, he looked online and said, couldn't find much about transdisciplinary art. And I was thinking, wow, that name is so much used in the art. We talked about interdisciplinary or multi multidisciplinary, not transdisciplinary. And I often feel that, well, I'm a kind of practicing artist, um, kind of odd that I'm here. So I said the key is in transdisciplinary. So I will see what it emerged. The, so uh, I see that I am an artist, but an anomaly in the art world. And I define art as creativity in thinking, methodology, and implementation. I don't have a private studio. Broken places are my canvases. Disfranchised people are my team members. And we create art together that at the end always belong to the people. I go to into my project with a multidisciplinary approach from creating visual arts like painting, sculpture, um, photography, to health program, construction, job training, and economic development. And um, so, but this remain in the areas of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. They don't really reflect the dynamic process um, that actually transform situation. So this morning, I finally figured out that this is in the, this dynamic and transformative process is in the realm of transdisciplinary art. I think the approach to create transdisciplinary art based on my experience, one, using knowledge and expertise from multiple fields of disciplines. Second, setting up innovative programming, um, innovative programming, which is actually the software of the project. That cuts down physical, mental, and emotional barriers. Three, implementing creatively so that a process of becoming, somebody used this term, a process of becoming happens that leads to transformation from brokenness and despair into hope, jubilance, and joy. So um, since I learned this process in the dynamicated inner city in North Philadelphia, so I call the process urban alchemy. So quickly, that's my theory. Good rag. <laughs> so anyway, um, the rest were just, I did have a theory, but I felt the need to search for 
authenticity in my personal life. I didn't go in broken places and try to fix them. Maybe they make people's life better. I just want to make my life, um, uh, my life meaningful. And yet, when I go to broken, broken places and work with the people there, and I found something that transformed me in our more nakedness with each other. And when we touch each other, when we touch each other's heart, it goes deep, that nurture deep in our heart and our soul. And what we emerge, we create problem, we solve problem together. And so that creates an equalizing reality. Well, what happened to Olga? Okay, so, um, so anyway, um, so this is the reality. And I was teaching at the University of the Arts. And so I went into here completely afraid. And, uh, um, and this is the brokenness of the, um, um, the prosperous America. But in the um, inner city, it looks like that. And I was invited to go to this um, abandoned plant. I had no experience. I had no, not much money. No one helped me, because that was 30 years ago when I started. But something in me said that your life journey starts when it has to do with the uh, with this broken land and i felt that in a way i needed to do it more than other people in the residence need to see it happen and so i went in and i convinced one person jojo who lived in a kind of abandoned house and i painted the vision about a uh, part that are full of color and beauty and he walked into that but no other adults and, but plenty of children, and children on the streets had no place to go. And those are, are and we didn't have money to even buy trees for this very desperate place. And we just create trees. And that's my first team from three and a half to 13 years old. And who said to that you need experience and education? You can do it right at that moment. And when no adults believed in, in, in what I wanted to do, and children believed, they can tell where is life experimentation. And so when we failed, and this is my first mosaic team of the team. Oh, right. Right. And at the beginning, we didn't succeed. We didn't know how. But when we finally figured it out, and I know the power of art in transforming abandonment into, um, into beauty. And uh, um, so, uh, at, oh. oh, wow, help. <laughs> so anyway, I continue. Uh, I continue the uh, story. Now, I want to tell you um, the, the art can transform personal uh, desperation, can, uh, can transform a poor community into whole and uh, uh, right. So, so um, it abandoned, it, it, people say inner city has no wealth. I say wrong because you're looking at the wrong way. Plenty of abandoned lot, and uh, uh, those actually are most free spaces for out of box thinking, innovation, and the uh, new solution to our problems. And so, abandoned uh, lot. And so, um, so eventually, there's no time to talk about the Jojo, and the children became our center. But the story I want to tell is Big Man. And he dream broke, and he got into drugs just like um, many people in our community. And then he has no 20 years using drugs and selling drugs, destroying himself and destroying the community. He has no place to go. And he thought one day he would die at the gutter of the street. He came to Jojo for refuge. And here is an artist from outside trying to find what uh, her meaning and existence in her existence. So we are together trying to figure out. Never had the art. And so I, I and he, he, he lost everything, but he has time on his hand. And I was teaching, I need people to help me. So we are on equal footing and uh, helping each other. So we don't need a lot of theory or
or whatever, and you just go and set up a situation we all can uh, we enter into ground on equal footing. That's democracy. We don't need to set bombs. We don't need to set anything. Just set it up. And so, um, so we come in, and he um, never had an eye, and I guided him. He suffered so much pain. He had to soak his feet in ice water every three hours. So much pain. But you know what? It is the making of the angels. And they get him um, wake up every morning. And why angel? Because we are a mind community. Dark and dangerous and crime and whatever you name it, we have it. And we have no expertise. We have no um, um, money or whatever. And I said, well, like the church. Let's evolve to the spirit of the angel to guide us. And so that's right. And so I said, this African American community, and it must be African angels, Ethiopian angels. So I made them very big. And so Big Ben and I, we are, it's not perfect, but it's, rough. it's rooted in the community, it's authentic. It became our angel alley. Now we don't have any religion, and often religion divides. But this is our angel, and it protects other community in a, uh, in a, a important way. So art can be a, a, a spiritual practice that console and that gives hope. And uh, because, and we say, inner city has no resources. Wrong. Look at because big man, he felt people say, oh, this is, you do this, it's beautiful. And he rarely had positive um, input. And so he said, this feels so good. And he felt comforted. And he said, Miss Lily, come back next year. I leave drunk and I will, um, I will leave drunk. And so the only trouble, he said, he left the drug, became addicted to mosaics. So he made the mosaic the rest of his life, became highly. Um, because he came in, and so we got the adults. People say, well, how do you get the adults? I never go and recruit people, but I know how to set baits. You know, for children, you just have all the things they like and so forth. We work with children. Children uh, create joy. And then that win us the trust of the adults. And they came in for jobs. Then I say, oh, we have to do job training. Now, all my crew, I found out through when they talked to reporters that they all have drug problems. I said, well, how do you deal with that? And people say that. Don't work with them because they bring you negative um, images. And I said, well, aren't they part of our community, like part of the family? You cannot reject, reject them because they use drug. Big man. He left the drug. I put him in charge of the crew. And then, so he became my foreman. And I also say that, let's change our mindset. Instead of an, an, an engage, engage in be bogged down by our negativity, and let's see what we can do together. So we do, they, 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 we did them, we worked together, and we became a yeah, big man. You see, he, he is the, um, my foreman. And because of him, he set up a narcotic anonymous meeting three times a week for a 10-year period. And so we have no money. We have no expert, but we found um, we found resources within our community. So this is before and plenty of validation. This is afterwards, and so we together, uh, people, broken people, working together, finding solution. And what do I bring? I I, I brought them what inspired me: Chinese gardens, Islamic. Uh, uh, Islamic courtyard, and then we even take um, uh, re renovating houses. And so we, we create a, a meditation park. Why meditation park? It's not for religious reason, but it's for necessity because life in inner city is so dangerous and oppressed and, uh, and problematic. And I said, I want to create a space where people can retreat, relax, reconnect and recenter. Then they can re-emerge to face the world. And uh, this is our tree of life. 
our people cannot travel very far. This is an uh, interconnected world culture. So we bring Islamic culture to here, and then we make it, we turn it into North Philadelphia International Art. And we are blessed with another abandoned lot. Use our imagination, we, um, and, and we create. And all the beautiful things are completely open to the community. But we do protect it. We protect it with beauty, creating beauty. 20th century, no, 21st century, you see black hole, whirlpool, right? And then flashes. Um, and we create, we incorporate. But at the beginning, I bring what I designed, and everybody helped me. They participate uh, from the different level. But look, we incorporate children's art now into our public art. So our art becomes unique. It's not gener generic, and it's rooted in the community. And why we use their art in honor build self-esteem uh, esteem in the most direct, simplistic way. Yeah, you see rainbow green. Those are two houses in love. See, they hold hand and their eyes all lit up in golden yellow, isn't that? And in the bathed in the rainbow green. Look at the flowers, okay, here. And I did, yeah, now, did that flower is, we turned it into cosmic flower, right? Square flower. A child. And then we have two acre industrial land, and then we turn them into tree farm with community, with um, city year, and blah, blah, blah. And we're helping. And so we plant trees. But having that just, and we grow like 15,000 seedlings selling them all in the, uh, in the city. So we start to have commerce and economic development. But without the art, it would not be, have the, it would, would not be us. And this is by big man. I just say, why don't you stop the a tower in the middle? This is big man and his crew, four crew from inner city. Never had art um, discipline, but look at what they did. And I suggest some animals, very rough thing. And look at what they did, very clunky, but beautiful, right? So you people can safari in our neighborhood, right? And Mogadushinan from Africa, right? And then in spring, it's filled with um, wildflowers, the best when children come and harvest them. And the world says that you're poor, you're colored, you're women, you're, you're, you, don't, um, you, you don't go to the right school, and so you don't count. I said, well, no problem. We refuse to be engaged in other people's prejudice. So we reprogram our brain. And then so we create a festival, and we look at us all. We are full of beauty, full of creativity, full of, of loveliness. And we are so proud of what we do. We make our puppet two story high. We proudly walk down our streets, and full of still abandoned lots and buildings. So, but we dare to bless all of them. And then we make, we go stop right in front of each house. You look at the house, it's full, so, so broken. And we say, may the good spirit bless this neighborhood. May the good spirit bless the household. And may the good spirit bless all our children. We bless ourselves and we ignore other people's uh, prejudice. And then you have seen a broken place becoming a beautiful space, a beautiful, comforting, beautiful space. Now you can see a beautiful space being transformed into a sanctified space. We have the arts festival. We come together, and our young people are graduating. How do we tell them that we are with you? We will stand by you. We create a ritual. So we will clean, bless the space, and then our young people, after training, they will have their ceremonial gone, and they're old, they're writing, and with light in hand, they enter the meditation on the heart, and they will ascend the steps. And there, the, all the community with light in their hand, they say that we are your foundation, we will stand by you. And our young people will say that we respect you, and we will work hard, we will realize our potential, and we will bring the light forward. And then I realized that just have to creativity and just have our imagination.
imagination, if it is not guided by light, it can be totally disrupted. And so I said I heard about the questioning of ethics and then the uh, development in science and all of that. But what does that do to the life in our planet and to ourselves and to humanity? If it's not of service and it's not based on generosity and spirit, gentleness and compassion, that will lead us to darkness. And on the other hand, I also believe that because in the way we set up, artists accomplish. If you are written, show in big museum, and then written by a powerful critics, and you sell millions of dollars, you made it. I said, there is another way to define art. Awaken the innate creativity. Sometimes it's when dormant. Awaken that. So all of us shine together. They're dormant awaken creativity, but guided by the gentleness and the goodness and the, and the compassion, then I think we can dispel the darkness and the problem that really, really faith of humanity and all life on earth is facing right now. And so this is, I left the village after 18 years and I established another organization. And this is what the village is like and turn and abandon bad land into the land of enchantment. Isn't that a lovely word? It was mentioned just before then, right? And um, so, do I have time? No. Oh, I three minutes. Okay, I go very quickly. How this is practiced in Africa. This is, oh, this is, Bring beauty into broken places in the world. That's my new, uh, our new logo, the Barefoot Artist. So just very quickly, how this has been practiced in Rwanda. When we talk about Rwanda, we hear of the genocide. This is the Twa people, the original people, completely oppressed, only 1%. Look how they live. They have no place to go, so they go to the soil. They become potters. And they are so poor. And I said, it, the poverty is so severe, it would just can it's hard to uh, bear. So I said, there must be a way to help them. And I said, well, let's give them gold, right? And so people say, you don't give them gold because those people, they don't think about future. They would kill the gold and they would eat it and they drink, drink all night and they would dance and that was that. That's true. They did not have the luxury of thinking of future. But my colleague, uh, Swanee from uh, Jean Bosco, he thought long and hard. He said, we will, 36 families, we will buy goats for the half of the family village. Six months later, then they, the other half will have little goats. And so nobody can eat the goats or sell the goats or um, whatever the goat, right? So this is a goat sharing. Uh, um, gold sharing festival, and they have nothing. So anything makes them happy. They dance with abandonment. So now this is bank account, little bank account, right? They have no land. They want an exhibition space, and so I said, okay, we buy a piece of land. They are barefoot artists, and so this is the first piece of land. They said, don't hire other people. Hire us. Okay, I said, you are all hired, and when? Tomorrow. So they start. And look how they start, women, but you women and even children. Not child labor, but learning to work with the family, helping the community. So we have a group discussion. Then um, the women want to speak, and this man shoot her because he wants to speak. So I said, in Mama Lily's workshop, you raise your hand, you wait for your turn, whether you are a man or woman. So that's what that was about. And so um, we figured out how do you let everybody hear from everybody. We separate them. Women as a group, men, children. We never listen to children, especially in Africa. But look, they are ecstatic that we listen to them. But look at what they design. So well thought out. And it's a complex of things. And here are the men. I go very quickly. So it has, and this is Mama Nidhi's contribution to have some beauty and uniqueness. And this is a making mosaics, broken mosaics. Anybody who wants to can come and do it. Art is all open, inclusive. And look at the concentration. Um, their image, their pot, their building, they are painting that. I 
don't think you can have anything more rooted in the community. And Abor, they are all dancers, so I said, why don't you all post for me? And so I did the, um, I, I shared with them, they choose what design they want. And then, yes, <laughs> they choose, very democratic, yeah. Um, so it happened that we become desirable. University of uh, Florida, they need to learn world health and uh, a classroom. We became their classroom. They came and helped us. So we paint together and the people there, and that's how you mix the community with the community and you equalize um, your um, your footing. Yeah, right, okay. And um, so, yeah. Maybe not perfect, but it's unique and nowhere in the world. And the last part, so this is the way, um, yeah, this is the way they, oh, I know, yeah, I mean, one minute, one minute, wow. oh, one minute, that's good, I can finish, yeah. <laughs> so this is not how they fire. They used to fire by banana leaves. They were too poor, but now they, this is how they fire. You know, they stack up, and then they can afford to buy wood. And look, isn't it lovely? Yeah? Yeah, I don't think they ever travel, but look at their gorilla. This is how they used to live. And one day, Mucho, I met him, the first person on the road, and his gorilla is almost half his pride and his size. He stopped. He said, Mama Lily, look at me. I dress smart. I look good, and I feel proud. Right. The best part, yeah. Now they are known, so people with car, with the motorcycle come. But the best, well, anyway, we got the land also, so they are a food problem. And then the government um, commissioned them to do energy saving uh, stove. And so that's stability. And the best, yeah, we always celebrate and sing and dance. They sing like divas, oh, beautiful. So we took them to international conference. Many of them never traveled out of Kigali, you know, so to be on stage, to be seen up. The last part, 30 seconds, the best part, I, I said, I got the news, you have to hear this, I got the news from Jean Bosco. He said, Mama Lee, the rich American Buffett, I think it's Howard Buffett, and President Kigali came and built this big building on the border of Congo. And so they do customary and commerce and so forth. And all, yeah, see? Yeah, I didn't lie, right, right, right there. And uh, Paul, Paul Kagami. And they need decoration. So all their decoration came from the Toa, um, uh, uh, came from the Toa, right, right, yeah. So that's from their city. That's a gorilla with an attitude, isn't it? It's a new with an expression. So this is the new building. And uh, many other people buy from them. They are proud now, four year time. So you equalize from the untouchables, disdained, and generations. Now, they, they, um, the Paul Kagami and the Howard um, Buffett says that they were deeply moved by the authenticity and the artistic quality of the trois pottery. And that is what art can do through transdisciplinary art can do in transforming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to, I do have to say something. I think one very important principle is guided is by this poet. And I felt it's important before this conference. And um, it's Lorca, um, Lorca uh, Federica uh, Lorca. And it says that I will always be on the side of those who have nothing and who are not even allowed to enjoy the nothing they have in peace. That's our, um, that's our brand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.